as detailed in what I will call our searing report, and it is searing, also released by the Justice Department today, this investigation found a community that was deeply polarized, a community where deep distrust and hostility often characterized interactions between police and area residents, a community where local authorities consistently approached law enforcement not as a means for protecting public safety, but as a way to generate revenue, a community where both policing and municipal court practices were found to be disproportionately harmful to African-American residents, a community where this harm frequently appears to stem, at least in part, from racial bias, both implicit and explicit. Now, the Attorney General Eric Holder yesterday releasing the Department of Justice report uh, detailing the rampant racism and discrimination taking place in the Ferguson, Missouri Police Department. We come back with Lisa Bloom, attorney based out of Los Angeles. Of course, we have Avis Jones DeWeaver and Cleo Monago as well. Uh, Avis, when we, uh, and also we're waiting to hear from uh, Tef Poe, one of the activists uh, in uh, Ferguson. We're trying to get him on the phone. Uh, Avis, when we look at this report, when we see these details mm -hmm. uh, and when you even when you talk about uh, the racist emails sent back and forth one of them said about President Barack Obama uh, don't worry he won't finish his first term because a black man does a whole job for four years uh, you, you had um, uh, d emails talking about crime stoppers and a black woman uh, getting an abortion right. uh, and folks forwarding those things around the reality is this is this is this is not isolated. No. This is not a question of well, two or three employees. This is what you talk about deal with culture. You're dealing with system. There is no way, in my estimation, that the people of Ferguson can move forward with any kind of a healing with that police department in a situation. It has to be disbanded. Yes. It has to be totally reorganized and completely gutted and cleaned out, just like the previous department Darren Wilson worked at. Came from. That's, That's right. exactly right. And what's really disturbing to me about those emails, it wasn't just police officers. That would be bad enough. It also included court officials who were involved in this. And really, in the context of everything in that report, as bad as those emails were, that was the least of these. So you're talking about setting dogs loose on a 14-year-old unarmed and then laughing about it. You're talking about tasering people over and over again for no reason. You're talking about re arresting people for trespassing in a house that he was invited into. You know, this is just outrageous behavior. And you're exactly right. You cannot build trust in a community that you have for decades oppressed in such offensive manner. Lisa, the police get called to uh, a residence, a woman and a man are involved in a domestic dispute. That all of a sudden, the woman, she's the one who gets arrested. Uh, you see individuals uh, who are told, look, calling them the N-word and said, uh, I'll find some stuff to arrest you on. Uh, when you look at this report where it shows that black folks were stopped at a t twice at a higher rate than whites, yet had a 26 uh, percent less chance of having contraband. I mean, again, what you have is a community that is absolutely under assault. This is an occupation. This is literally, if you, if you look at it, this is literally South Africa yeah. uh, under its apartheid system. You know, Roland, you and I traffic in words, and it's hard to find the words strong enough to encapsulate what happened here. It's overtly racist. It was a police state. We're talking about so many innocent people being the victims of constitutional violations. I mean, it is absolutely appalling. And, you know, I, I only wish we could get every member of the public to read this report or at least read the first few pages that are the summary pages because there's so much denial in America about racism. There are so many people who feel that, oh, you're just playing the race card, you're just making it up, you're just overreacting. And this is a top down indictment of everything that went wrong in Ferguson. And I have to tell you, I have read a lot of data like this. Of course, it is not just Ferguson. There's just the attention right. in Ferguson because That's of right. the protest. Protesters. And thank God for those peace peaceful protesters who got the DOJ to come into this small town, at, relatively speaking, and do this report. But I've read decisions like this in New York. There was a sweeping decision about racial profiling in New York City, a very liberal, large city. It's not much different. In Los Angeles, we've had reports like this. I mean, this That's is right. a nationwide problem. Mm -hmm. Cleo, what's next? Because you have this report, obviously DOJ, they're going to look at suing the Ferguson Police Department. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, you have folks, uh, and I was engaging with some folks on Twitter yesterday, uh, who, are, who are angry, who want to be disruptive. But the reality is there has to be a way forward. 
uh, and how do we get to that point to tell folks, channel your emotion and your anger to change a system, but when a lot of folks simply don't even believe the system can be changed, well then they're sort of at a standstill. Well, I think this answers your question from my perspective. One thing that needs to be considered in this whole thing is that we read in this report, but I was in Ferguson, and what's not being talked about enough is that these people in Ferguson went through this for decades mm -hmm. and decades and decades. Post-traumatic, I mean, uh, post-traumatic stress. For decades. I mean, there were people there who I met who were older who went through the same thing when they were younger and they're like 40s and 50s. This is a long-term thing. My point in raising this is that, as I mentioned earlier, is, well, we get into your, your, your question in terms of solutions. The black community, along with assimilating, along with achieving, needs to also understand the importance of political literacy. We also need to understand the importance of admitting that there's racism. Sometimes we don't want to be bothered with it because we just right. want to quote unquote do good and, and have a good job and have some money. But you're getting it, you're getting paid on top of a system of racism that's killing our children or that's compromising their lives. People are being incarcerated. I mean, this situation is not just Ferguson. Ferguson is a microcosm of an American phenomena that's been around before either person involved in this discussion was even born. But my concern is the black community's normalization of this trauma. And instead of getting our children prepared to deal with this and navigate through it in ways that are powerful, we're under the impression that we're powerless, Roland. Right. We think we're powerless. Like right. You and I talked about earlier, instead of understanding what you mentioned in terms of understanding that the DOJ report is a report card that gives us clear evidence where we can take, uh, it, we can sue, a lot of us don't believe that these systems work. There's a credibility problem among, in the community, outside the community, even at the White House, and the lack of credibility is making young people just have fits and not understand the importance of, the, of dealing with these systems to change laws. Avis, how do we move forward? Uh, it's Well, first of all, we really do need to clean the house. It needs to be completely cleaned house. That particular police department cannot be reformed, in my eyes. Uh, everyone there needs to get a pink slip. They need to start over from scratch. To, in order to build trust in that community, you have to have a completely different workforce. Well, who's going to demand that? The, the Justice Department, they can, they can enforce a consent degree and clean house, and that's what exactly needs to happen. Uh, Lisa, i got about 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. What's the path forward? Well, there are some great recommendations at the end of the report about community policing and, you know, the shocking recommendation that the Constitution actually be followed in Ferguson. I mean, I think that's important. But there's one glaring omission, and that is a complete lack of reference to the biased grand jury proceeding against Darren oh, Wilson. Yes. And for those oh, interested, yes. I did a 25-minute video with slides and graphics outlining how that proceeding was completely biased. It's available on my website, thebloomfirm.com. I've also written about it a lot on my blog on avvo.com avvo but what happened did they just run out of time they didn't want to <laughs> go there they didn't want to look at all of the biases in that grand jury proceeding in my opinion a special prosecutor needs to be appointed to review the whole darren wilson matter i'm sorry that the federal government did not see fit to do that because we're talking about a court system and police that are heavily biased and we saw that play out in the grand jury uh, we are over time right now folks but uh in about uh 30 minutes i'm going to give my commentary on what's next. You don't want to miss that uh, because that's important. We can talk about this report, we can express outrage, but there has to be a discussion on how do we move forward. So I'll have that uh, in our six block at the end of the show. So you don't want to miss that. Lisa Bloom, I certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Folks, coming up next, find out why the author of the book, Diversity Explosion, says young people are the key to easing racial tensions in America. We'll talk to him up next right here on News One Now on TV One.